What's going on guys? On today's video, I'm gonna do some printing. Like you see here on the wall, I love printing my photography. I'm having so much fun with it. And I'm gonna take you through the process of that uh, on today's video from start to finish. So let's get into it. But first, today's video is sponsored by Squarespace.com. Squarespace is an awesome place to host your photography business website. For example, you can create a members area for your audience or you can sell your various photography related products like prints and calendars, and you can really easily integrate it all with accounting and e-commerce softwares. Best of all, the beautiful templates at Squarespace make it really easy to build your business website and make it look professional in the process without any serious tech chops. So head to squarespace.com slash Brendan Vanson for a 10% discount on your first purchase. Okay, so excuse the mess down here at the printing station because we're still renovating, so it, yeah, it's a mess. The first step you need to do when you're printing is figure out your paper situation. So if you have a smaller printer, you're gonna use cut paper, but if you use a big one like this, you're gonna have the option of either cut paper or rolls. Personally, I think there's no reason you wouldn't use a roll unless you're printing really casually. With a roll, you can be more flexible in your sizes. It's just gonna be better value in general. So the paper I use comes in either cut sheet or rolls, but this is a roll. This is Hand Mule uh, Photo Reg Satin. It's a 310 GSM. I love this paper because I feel like it almost gives a bit of a 3D look to the images, especially for color and landscape photography photos. The image really pops off the page with this. The next step, something you probably only need to do if you're using roll paper, and that's just figuring out a layout and trying to find the best way to print economically. So my roll paper is 24 inches, and I'm gonna do this all in inches instead of centimeters because it's easier to do math this way. But it's 24 centimeters for a roll paper, which means I wouldn't print something like 20 inches because that would just waste paper. So I offer uh, eight by 10 because I can do three eight by 10s. I offer 12 by 18 because I can print two 12 by 18s. I print 16 by 24, because you can print one like that. And I offer 24 by 32, because I can print like that. I can obviously do some Tetris and offer things like 16 by 24 and then squeezing in some eight by 10s as well. But I like to try to keep it simple. So for the purpose of this video, let's do uh, a three set of eight by 10s. So I just use this professional print and layout thing that comes with the Canon printer. You can use Lightroom or a number of other programs, but I just find this to be the easiest. I've built templates so that I can literally just drag and drop the photos into them that I need. A mistake that I made when I started is I printed right to the edges. And when you print right to the edges, it can look really cool on the paper, but when you frame it, the frame can kind of bleed into the image and it can just look wrong. Or if you're doing wrapped canvases, it can look wrong. I like to leave at least a little bit of a border on my images. I like how they sit in the frame better that way. And that's a personal feeling. You can definitely print all the way to the edges if you want, especially with a really thin frame, but that's just something I do. So I've left basically a half inch off each side and then the tops. And then I've got three eight by tens. Of course, the images I'm using aren't eight by tens. But again, with the borders, it'll work out in an eight by 10 frame. You're printing for the frame, not the photo. I have two print orders left. One is an image from the Faroe Islands. So drag that over. One is this image from Deadvlay in Namibia. And since I have three slots, I'm also gonna print one image from Portugal because I have the gallery upstairs and those images are gonna sell probably more consistently once we open. So I'm gonna need kind of a backlog of those, whereas I can print the other ones kind of on demand. And then I literally just take the image and print them in or drag them into my templates up top. So I've got them all there. Now over here, these are all the settings. There's a couple really important things. One, you wanna print on the highest quality possible. That's super important. And the second thing is, every paper's different and every paper prints different. So most paper companies, the really good paper companies, have paper profiles that you can upload to your software. So the Hanwell paper has an a image profile, they're called ICC profiles. I've uploaded that profile onto here and it'll print with this. 
I tried printing without the ICC just to test the difference, and I chose Canon satin paper, which is very similar. The result was slightly different, but it was definitely better with the color profile. So that's something you definitely need to do. And then you just hit print. Okay, the images are out and to the eye, they look phenomenal. I'd usually use a magnifying glass to have a quick look uh, through them, but I can do it with the eye as well, just going into a bright light like this and just having a look. I like to just make sure that sometimes the ink doesn't hold properly in certain parts of the paper. It's pretty rare, but it happens and sometimes it smudges. But yeah, these look really good. I have no issues with any of them at all. So let's cut them. When I built this table, I should have probably made it taller because I'm really gonna have to squish down to do my work here. Uh, cutting the images is scary, but it's really not as bad as you think it is if you have the right tools. The first thing I do is I always make sure the machine's doing as much cutting as possible. I don't wanna have to cut because I have imperfections, believe it or not. So you can cut um, many different ways. This is just the way I do it. This is an X-Acto knife as we call it, or a box cutter, whatever you want to call it. If you get a really, really sharp blade, a really good uh, level like this, you can use that to slice your edges on bigger images. Or you can use a guillotine chomper. But I really don't like doing that because I'm, I'm imperfect and sometimes my lines aren't great. So instead what I try to use all the time or as often as possible is a precision cutter. This precision cutter was about $80 and don't cheap out on precision cutters. If you cheap out on them, you get, they don't cut very good. So now it's pretty simple. This is 24 inches. I've lined them all up, centered. So basically I just slide this through, feed it through really gently. Lots of photographers will also use those white gloves when they do this. I'm just super, try to be super gentle with everything and I think it's fine. So I line this up right to eight inches, make sure it's squared and level and press down. And then I just push all the way through and I've got a nice little eight by 10. How cute is that? Now for me, the next step is signing. So uh, I use this pen. This is actually specifically for signing. Actually, this pen's by the paper company. I never realized that. This is a hand mule pen. <laughs> Go figure. So yeah, I just signed really small in the corner. I don't want it to be too close to the edge because then it kind of gets hidden by the frame. Smaller prints like this, the eight by 10, sometimes you just want to initial them, but I just make, my signature is pretty small. So I just make a tiny little signature in the corner. The next step is using a prote protective spray. I don't know how many people do this, but I do. Um, this is from Hanuel, it's specifically for this. So just from a distance, I usually put it on the ground and then you just do a, a nice soft spray across. Nice even spray. You let it sit for like a minute and then you do a second coat. Not only does that protect it, but I actually find it brings out a little bit more of the color. It makes it a little bit glossier. Once the spray is dried, it's time to pack it up. I uh, double pack. So these are like, I don't even know what you call these, like protective films, film protective sleeves. Let's call it a protective sleeve. That's probably actually the name for it and just get slid into that. And then they actually seal and that's gonna keep the dust out. You can get packs of these for like, for fairly cheap actually. Seal it to keep the dust out. And then I actually double pack it. So this is 
This is like foam paper, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Fold it over. And then once you have that foam up, you just almost like fold it like a, a Christmas present. Although I'm like most men and I can't do that at all. And then I forgot the tape, but I basically just tape both ends. And then the other thing is, I ran out of the boxes yesterday I shipped them in. For 8x10s like this, what I like to ship them in is old record sleeves. Because they had to have like a hardener on the inside so that they wouldn't bend and break the records. You can still buy them from most um, packing supply companies. I have a, a pack on the way because, yeah, I ran out. But they come super hard and then they basically ship like this and they won't bend or break and it's super easy. For the long, for the bigger ones, they get shipped in a roll. So it's the same process. The only difference is I then roll it up and I slide it in here. I cap off both ends like that and then I tape up the ends and then I ship them off. I think it's super important to ship properly, but it is a cost. In fact, the cost of the shipping stuff is often almost just as much, if not more, than the actual print. Uh, and speaking of selling and prices, I want to go back to the computer and we'll talk about selling things. Okay, back at the desk. Uh, I think we proved on today's video that printing photography really isn't that scary. Even if your printer is a little bit scary and intimidating like I feel like mine is. And I think that you don't need a giant printer like that. Even one of the small photography printers at home, they just do beautiful, beautiful prints. So no, it's not scary printing your photography, but it is a little bit scary trying to sell it. And basically since the start of this channel, I've been talking about how printing your photography is scary and sometimes honestly a waste of time. I even did a video a couple months ago or a month ago where that was called Stop Selling Prints. And the thesis statement of that video wasn't stop selling prints. It was stop selling prints if you don't have an audience or stop selling prints if you don't have a way to reach a market. Because it doesn't make sense to try to sell something if you don't have people that want to buy it. And I know that that's hard truth to tell some people. Some people got really frustrated with me saying that, but it just makes sense. You wouldn't try to sell anything else if you didn't have a market for it. So why would you do that with photography? You wouldn't go home and brew a pot of coffee and then post online saying, who wants a cup of coffee? It's two euros. I promise it's really good. So don't do that with photography. And that's not meant to discourage you. It's just meant to tell you or encourage you to find ways to reach a market. So that might be reaching out to a cafe and asking if you can put your photos on their wall to help decorate. It might be reaching out to galleries and asking if they have a featured get artist slot every month. It could be, uh, it could be starting a website, for example. And that's honestly probably the best thing to do is start a website, start a YouTube channel, start a, an Instagram. If you don't have a physical space, your space needs to be online. When I posted my video about getting the printer the other day and uh, talking about printing images, a lot of people said, Brendan, your gallery looks really cool and it looks really simple. How did you put together that template? And honestly, it was super, super easy. I only use two programs. I use WooCommerce and Stripe, that's it. And if you use a site like Squarespace, they actually have tons of ways to integrate e-commerce to help you sell your products. So you can integrate all these things really easy. And then it's a very hands-off thing because everything's done for you. So let me kind of walk you through the process of what happens from a consumer standpoint and on my end, selling the prints now that that gallery is set up. I set it all up with WooCommerce, as I mentioned, but you could use any basically e-commerce template. A consumer comes onto my page, they scroll through my gallery, they love an image, they click on it. Then there's the option to add it to the cart. They hit add to cart. Then they have the option to keep shopping or they can go to the cart and buy it. Up to now, that's all done through the e-commerce integration in my site. Then once their cart's ready, they hit pay now and they pay through Stripe. Stripe is a payment processing uh, program that's done all online. They can pay via credit card or debit card. I think maybe even some other ways. Stripe then takes that payment, takes a small fee as well. And then the e-commerce integration sends an order confirmation to you, the consumer, and it sends a notification to me, the seller, that I have an order. 
The money stays in Stripe for a couple days and then eventually it goes off to my bank account. And then the way I kind of ship images is probably similar to most photographers in that I have one day a month that I print and ship. It's just more efficient to do it that way. I don't think it makes that much sense to print every single time you get an order. I think you'll waste paper, you'll waste time. It, it's just more of a challenge. Basically, I set a day aside every single month, like it was yesterday actually, that I print every single one of the photos that month, pack them up and go to the post office and ship them all. It just makes the most sense from an efficiency standpoint. So yes, selling prints is a little bit scary at first. Finding consumers is very hard, but in the end, once you get it all set up, it kind of just works. And now if I need to add a new product or remove one, it takes five minutes and it's just on kind of on auto right now, which is awesome. And yeah, if you guys want to buy a print, you're welcome to do so. There's a link in the description of this video, both to that and to squarespace.com slash Brendan Vanson, because like I said, you get a discount if you want to open a site over there and it is an awesome place to sell products. So that's it for today's video. I'll see you next time where we're going to go out in the field and make a photo hopefully worthy of hanging on the wall. I'll see you guys there. Peace.